Over the past few years, the GMT watch, which has always been very popular, has gained even more popularity due to the high demand for the Rolex GMT Master. Hundreds of homages have sprouted up from great brands like Laurier and Baltic, micro brands and some major brands, Ball, Oris, even Timex have gotten into the game. However, there are some very iconic GMT watches out there and today I want to talk about five iconic GMT watches, including that Rolex GMT Master, but are actually just as iconic. So I'm going to get right into it. The first watch I'm going to talk about, it was actually the first GMT, or technically the first GMT, and that is the Glycine Airman. It was actually Glycine with the Airman who introduced a watch capable of displaying two 24-hour time zones in 1953. That was one year prior to Rolex and the introduction of the GMT Master. With a very straightforward design, the watch simply has a bezel that rotates 24 hours for a second time zone. The Airman was immediately a success with military and commercial pilots alike. It was very popular with frequent flyers as well. Still in production today, the Glycine Airman is a great addition into any collection. However, they are particularly attractive because of their price. Great vintage examples can be had for anywhere between $1,000 and $10,000. So you can get one of these original versions at a pretty decent price considering depending on the actual condition. But if you want to get a new one, you can get those for around $300 depending on the way you buy it. If you buy it on the gray market, they sell for as low as $300, $350 used, and then about $400, $450 on the gray market. Really great watches, and especially considering the price. Now, of course, no list would be complete. You cannot talk about iconic GMT watches without talking about Rolex, and quite possibly the most recognizable GMT of all time, and perhaps one of the most recognizable watches of all time, the Rolex GMT Master. That was released a year after the Glycine, as I mentioned, the Glycine Airman. However, the reference 6542 combined an arrow-tipped GMT hand along with a local time display and a rotating 24-hour bezel. Quickly becoming an icon, a standard issue for Pan Am pilots, this was the go-to watch for many pilots of the day. Today, the GMT Master II is the standard to which all GMTs are measured. Popular because it's a true GMT with an independently operated local hour hand. Prices, which some would say are out of control, are double the MSRP, in some cases actually more than that, while vintage versions can fetch tens of thousands of dollars. However, Rolex has another watch up its sleeve, and that is, of course, the Rolex Explorer II. Of course, another iconic GMT from Rolex in a simpler form. Introduced in 1971, the reference 1655 was created specifically for Spelunkers, and at first wasn't a dual time watch. Actually, the second hour hand was merely there to display day and night, which was particularly useful for use in dark caves. Later on, the caliber 3085 movement was introduced, which now meant that the 24 hour hand could be adjusted independently. Using this with the fixed 24 hour bezel, you have a second time zone. The Explorer 2 became a true GMT able to display two time zones. Now, next on this list is one of my favorite watches on this entire list, and that is the Zodiac Aerospace. The Zodiac Aerospace, I think, is sort of an overlooked GMT by a lot of people. The Zodiac Seawolf was alongside with the Rolex Submariner, the Blanc Pomp 50 Fathoms, one of the first diving watches available to the market. In fact, it hit the market the same year as the Submariner and the 50 Fathoms and has been around ever since. The Zodiac Aerospace was introduced in 1962 and is based on the pioneering Seawolf design. The Seawolf was and still is today an affordable alternative to the Submariner with a great heritage and so is the Aerospace considered an alternative to the Rolex GMT Master. Often overlooked, as I mentioned, vintage pieces sell for about $1,000 to $3,000 in good condition. They get a 35 millimeter case, so they aren't very big, but they do get those funky colors that 
Zodiac love to use. New versions in 40 millimeters sell for around $1,500 brand new. You can get them from anywhere between $900 and $1,200 on the secondary market used or gray market. These are excellent watches that offer really great GMT functionality. They are office GMTs, not traveler's GMTs, so that means that the actual GMT hand moves. Uh, the newer ones that is powered by a SoProd movement Great watches, great additions to any collection. Zodiac makes some killer watches. They've always been an affordable version. For those of you who really want functionality uh, and good looks, they really offer a lot for the money. Last but not least, I'm going to bring in a watch that is actually not technically a GMT. On this list, I have added the Tissot Navigator. So that was the original Tissot Navigator released as the first mass produced watch to feature 24 time zones on the dial. The Tissot Navigator came out the same year as that Glycine Airman and that was in 1953. Technically the world's first world time watch. It uses a rotating inner disc which shows the time in 24 different locations around the world simultaneously. Still made to this day, vintage versions sell anywhere between $1,000 and $10,000 depending on the condition and the materials because these actually came in precious materials such as gold and rose gold, but you can also get them in stainless steel. These have beautiful dials, very simple operation. You just have a rotating inner disc which displays the actual city names and it's very, very easy to use. And like I said, $1,000 to $10,000 for those vintage models. If you want to buy one brand new from Tissot, they go for about $2,000 new and about $1,000 on the gray market, used market. These are very good looking watches, a little bit busy. They kind of remind me of that Glycine. They have a very good look uh, and they aren't incredibly thick, especially the new ones because they use the ETA 2892. So these are actually kind of thin, uh, very good looking watches and obviously, Historically important because they were the first, technically one of the first world time watches. So it's almost like a GMT, very similar functionality to a GMT, um, except you have that disc. Really awesome watches on this list. Some amazing values on this list because that Rolex GMT Master obviously sells for a lot more than the asking price, but there are alternatives that actually have real history that you can get for a lot less money. However, when you're making a list about GMTs, you cannot miss the Rolex GMT Master. It's probably the most important. It popularized the GMT and it made it extremely popular with everyday people, not only pilots, um, and it really is credited for that. So all of the watches that I mentioned today have their own sort of little history um, and, and their little details that make them really cool. Uh, and I like all of them. I would love to have. I would love to have every single one of the watches that I mentioned today in my collection, especially the Glycine and the Tissot Navigator. I would love to have original versions of those in my collection. I think they're beautiful. The Zodiac Aerospace that 35 millimeters might be a little bit too small for me. I would definitely go for a 40 millimeter. They get so proud movements in them. Uh, beautiful watches uh, and really nicely made. Of course, the Explorer I would love as well. Uh, but again, uh, a little bit on the expensive side uh, and I don't like to pay overpriced. But tell me what you guys think in the comments below. These are historic, more iconic GMTs. I'm sure there are tons of other GMTs out there that I have missed. Please hit me up in the comments below. Tell me what you guys think. What have I missed here? Uh, what would you have included in this list? I wanna hear from you guys. Please also don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon. It is super helpful for the channel. I very much appreciate it. Please follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is Watch Chris Blog. I have some links in the description. Those links are to Amazon. If you click those links and buy anything, it helps support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra. However, I very much appreciate it. Anyway, thank you for logging on. I'll catch you guys in the next video.